So, grüß euch. Jetzt habe ich schon zum dritten Mal die Aufnahme neu gestartet müssen, aber ich hoffe, jetzt wird es funktionieren. Ich habe da jetzt nämlich, ähm, warte mal, warte mal, Zeit, 40 Minuten ist alles wurscht. Ähm, es ist nämlich was Neues rausgekommen heute. Dazu gleich. Erstens haben wir ein Bier aufgemacht. Super Bier. Kellermeister schmeckt mir vorwärts. Ich mache jetzt nicht Werbung dafür. Es ist. Was mir taugt, deswegen sage ich es. Mir schmeckt es hier, das ist ein gutes Bier. Und gestern, auch vorgestern, habe ich einen richtig sotten guten Bock geschossen. Eigentlich wollte ich zuerst, dass die Wiki anschießt. Aber es ist leider nicht so recht gekommen, weil es beim Hochsitz zu Plätzen aufstehen war und weit anschießen von 220 Meter. Und ein richtig, ein richtiger Lackel für unser Gebiet da. Das Alter dürfen, also bei uns, wir machen immer noch A und B Bock, also mit. Er ist alt nur, sagen wir so, aber es könnte sein, dass er die 5 Jahre hat. Also ist er noch ein auf der alten Regelung wahrscheinlich alt genug. Jo, 375 Gramm hat er 18 Kilo Wildbreitgewicht. Okay, um das geht es heute aber nicht. Heute geht es um die Neuvorstellung von der Husqvarna 592. So, ich habe da jetzt ein bisschen durchgeplatelt schon in YouTube. Und die haben wir jetzt extra Programm runtergeladen und die Hof. Das funktioniert und wir werden jetzt einfach nochmal die Aufnahme starten. <lacht> Passt. Also wir sehen wir uns jetzt da in dem OPS Videoprogramm. Passt. Für dich. So, hallo, jetzt sind wir da in dem Aufnahmeprogramm. Ich hoffe, es funktioniert, so wie mir das vorstellt. Ähm, Mikrofon hoffe ich, ich wird jetzt auch funktionieren und wir schauen uns jetzt ein paar Videos an. Bezüglich der 592. Ähm, ihr wisst, die letzte große Sorge, die jetzt das Quarner ausgebracht hat, ist die 572. Die hat natürlich auch funktioniert, wirklich tadellos. Und jetzt werden wir uns natürlich das anschauen, wie, das, ähm, wie die Neige das Quarner 592 ausschaut und wollen sie eventuell auf den Markt bringen für, für Österreich. Ich werde morgen ziemlich mit, mit einem ähm, Mitarbeiter von der Quarner Österreich zusammen. Und das passt die Wiki an. Ja, Wiki. Ich tue gerade Video aufnehmen. Du, ja, bist du eh gleich da, oder? Hi, an. Starten stoppen. Warum? Ja, ist bei mir jetzt nur vor Bulk Street, gell? Bis später. Tschü ha? Ja, mehr Bulk Street. Ich muss aufnehmen, tschüss. So, Licht abgeschaltet. Ähm, passt, wir schauen uns da jetzt ein paar Sachen an. Und ich würde sagen, wir beginnen mal da mit der Emily Roberts. Das ist, ich habe mir die Sachen vorher schon ein bisschen durchgeschaut. Das ist äh, eine äh, Everest, also eine Baumpflegerin. Und schauen wir mal, was sie zum Sagen hat. Nur, dass du es wisst, während dem Video kann ich, ähm, kann ich schon mal sagen, weil mein Herz nicht, weil das Video das übertönt. Deswegen wird zwischen den Abstoppen, falls das was gibt. I'm Emily Roberts, I'm from Olympia, Washington, and I've been in the tree industry for 13 years. My first impression of the 592 XP is that it totally rips. The Husqvarna 592 XP's cutting capacity is really kind of perfect for the weight, the balance, the power that it has. It can und scheinen gibt es da neigen Hölben, so wie morgen auch mit dem, mit dem von uns keiner reden, mit dem Florian und ein bisschen neigerig, wo es da, wo es da sonst noch so Neues gibt. Ähm, der Auspuff, ich hoffe, man sieht das so noch einmal. Da, <lacht> ich weiß nicht, wenn man von vorne anschaut, er schaut nicht wirklich aus wie Profi, wenn einer Profi sagt, ich bin neigerig. So schaut dann ein bisschen viele Grane aus die Feder, aber es wird man alles drauf kriegen, wie es ausschaut. Das ist X-Cut Kitten, die Verschlusstankdeckel, da hat man die, die ein, ein größere Sichtfenster, was ich schon gesehen habe. Vielleicht sehen wir noch bei den nächsten Videos äh, eine bessere Detailaufnahme. It can cut at a sustainable throttle for as long as you want it to and it just munches wood It can cut really fast. The combination of the light bar and the X-cut chain 
and the powerhead of the 592 XP is a great combination all the way around. The X also, it is the Nege Schwert, so to say, which is very light and shiny. Nege, the Nege X Touch Kit, which you have already known, is with the Hermes and Nege Kit. We only saw it once. I'm working on it. The Nege is really good. Und ein schönen Kehrdurchzug stark vor in der Klasse von 95 Recovered bei das von einer Sock natürlich auch. Cut Chain, I've been thoroughly impressed with. Every time I've cut everything with it on each saw that I've used. The light bar is phenomenal for that size of chainsaw. It, it's a game changer. The game changer for me is that running a saw of that size all day, I'm clearly not a massive man, you know, um, and running a size, a saw of that size all day uh, with a light bar on it, I can go way longer. I feel more balanced. I feel less fatigue. I feel safer because of the balance and the maneuverability. Like I said, totally rips. <laughs> Das ist natürlich auch hart, mit so einer Sock bin ich neugierig, wie schwer dann die Sock wirklich ist, weil die mit den Angaben ist immer so, und das passt jetzt wirklich dann. So, da haben wir wieder einen, ein Arborist, also einen, einen, einen Baumpfleger, jetzt bin ich neugierig, was der zum Sagen hat. I am certified Arborist Tobias Wigand from Charlotte, North Carolina, and I've been in the industry about 12 years. Also, ich arbeite schon seit 12 Jahren. <laughs> My experience cutting with the 592 XP was a really great experience. It's a very powerful saw, and that combined with the X-Tough light bars and the X-Cut chain really gave it a, a high cutting capacity. So the 592 XP has a, a third generation autotune. <laughs> Der hat noch nicht wirklich oft der Motor so gefällt. Also wer das braucht, also ich, nein. <lacht> es ist sicher für ein, ein Laien eine große Hilfe, Laien, wenn man eine richtige Schneid haben will, eine richtig gute, nachher ist das Zeug da oben, was da schon. In it. And it's at the point now where it's just pull, pull it and it starts. The, the starting procedure is simplified on this saw and that's, that's nice to have. So there's no more high idle or hot star, it's just rip it and go. As er sagt, man braucht noch Anzeigen und sie läuft. Anscheinend hat es einen super Start verhalten. So, wir schauen wir uns jetzt noch zwei Videos an. Sehen wir da. Und nachher da haben wir das offizielle Teaser Video. Hello, my name is Darren Dean and I am a forester in British Columbia on Vancouver Island. Also der nicht Baumaufrauen macht oder so Sachen, das ist wirklich ein professioneller Forstarbeiter. Schauen wir uns jetzt am Sagen hat. I've been working with uh, chainsaws for almost 30 years now. Wow, uh, the cutting speed on the 592 is amazing. It doesn't matter how big of a log you put it into, it just rips through. The thing's a beast, you can't slow it down. The new Autotune 3.0 on the 592 was, was really nice. Um, I really like the new starting technology on the 592 XP. Just one position, flip it to on and pull the cord and go. There's, you don't have to worry about a choke, hot start, cold start. It's the same every time. Die Amerikaner neigen <laughs> ständig zur Übertreibung. Bei so einem Holz, wie man da gesehen hat, braucht man natürlich nicht so ein Riesenschwert, das ist ganz klar. Aber schwer da oben, wir brauchen. It's, it's a great feature, I really like it. Gesehen beim Drogen, also die Motorsock hat schon ein bisschen Gewicht schaut aus und schlecht wird sie nicht sein. Jetzt schauen wir uns aber das offizielle ähm, Teaser Video an. Es ist leider alles auf Englisch. Aha, da haben wir noch ein, ein, ein Werbevideo, da schauen wir uns das Sagen mal genau an. Anscheinend gibt es auch eine zweite Sorge, so bei der 572 hat es eine 565 gegeben, da gibt es eine 585. 
Und ja, der Auspuff, er schaut jetzt professionell aus. Vielleicht überlegt man sich da noch was. Also da haben sie noch keinen äh, Fedelheber kamehanischen. Für mich da in Europa haben wir eigentlich fast jeder Forsterwetter heute halt schon einen mechanischen Fellheber, sei es ein Forstreich äh, oder, oder ein Fallfass. Das gibt es noch nicht. Überall. Ja, mein Sieg. Ähm, da nochmal die aufklappbaren Links, Schnellverschlüsse eh schon bekannt, das ein größeres Sichtfenster. Auf der hinteren Seite haben wir gesehen, der Deckel, der Kettenraddeckel von der 572 ist der identische. Und ähm, die zwei Aus Ausschlag, also ein Einschlagkralle, die hat natürlich nicht so ein thermisches Schwert drauf wie die Amis Reichsmaler. So, schauen wir noch kurz. <lacht> Jetzt schauen wir Hi everyone and very much warm welcome to this streamed broadcast from Husqvarna Sweden. Ich hoffe, ihr kennt so viel dann Englisch. Ich werde jetzt nicht jedes Ding übersetzen probieren. Ein bisschen Englisch kann ich, aber ich werde jetzt nicht alles übersetzen probieren. Das ist eine von den ersten Motorsägen, die Husqvarna entwickelt hat. Um, okay, na, fahren wir fort. In diesem Programm haben wir have the pleasure of unveiling something truly awaited and something really exciting, right, Gent? Yes, it is absolutely an exciting day for all those who are lovers of power and performance. For those that are interested in extreme productivity, today is an important day for all of our loggers and our tree care professionals around the world. My name is Ingrid Ekström, Marketing Director at the Tree Professional Business Unit at Husqvarna. And my name is Jens Simmons. I'm Business Unit Director for Tree Professionals at Husqvarna as well. So obviously today's main topic is chainsaws. And we're going to start with taking a stroll down the memory lane all the way down to 1959, with the new era started for Husqvarna, the chainsaw mm -hmm. era. Yes, looking back at Husqvarna's rich history, we have a history that includes firearms, bicycles. Also, erklären, sie erklären jetzt so gut, dass sie eben also die Geschichte damit jetzt einmal grundlegen und wo halt 1959 jetzt jetzt alles, kann ja sein, dass nicht verhärt haben. Um, dass sie halt von dort äh, weg die ganze Geschichte der Motorsägen jetzt erklären werden. Nur damit die nicht englischsprachige dürfen wieder mitnehmen. <lacht> Motorcycles, getting into lawnmowers and of course, as you mentioned, in 1959, the chainsaws. Also 1959, 1959, passt schon. Exactly, and it was Husqvarna's tried and tested experience in casting and construction of lightweight engines that allowed our sawmill manager, Justa Arneklu, to try out the idea of building and designing a chainsaw. Mm -hmm. So in the fall of 1959, the Model 90 that you see here in front of us was introduced to the market to really answer three main challenges of loggers. Exactly, and one of them was the weight. The 90 was lightweight. And secondly was the sound level. The Model 90 was significantly more silent than anything else on the market. As a matter of fact, its closest competitor was twice as loud. And of course, number three, the color. The Husqvarna orange color that made it really easy to find in the forest. As I said, it's just a little bit about the lightweight of a motor. It was a very comparable motor. At that time, it was really hard. It was the most comparable motor double so loud. Dass man sich das nicht vorstellen kann. Und die speziell die Farbe, die Husqvarna Farbe, die Orange, das haben sie extra gemacht, damit sie die Motorsock wieder leicht im Wald finden haben können. And from these beginnings, a new era in Husqvarna's history began. A history of innovation and technical solutions that would step by step 
lead to revolutionizing and changing the forestry industry forever. And throughout it all, one thing has always been in the forefront, the willingness to listen to our users, to develop an advanced industry, to innovate and invent, to better meet their realities and their challenges. Which brings us to today, to 2021. And we are proud at Husqvarna to introduce our latest innovation, a new generation of chainsaw technology, the 592 XP and 585. Es ist gliedert sich wieder in eine Profisäge, die 521 XP, das ist die Profisäge und die 585 Professional, das ist eine Semi-Profisäge. We have with us Mr. Johan Hellendorf, Director of Product Management for Husqvarna's Professional Chains. Ja, vorher die Vorstellung wäre nochmal dieselbe. Oh, ich weiß nicht, was ihr dazu sagt, schreibt es einmal in die Kommentare und das hat mich interessieren, was ihr dazu sagt. Wenn es funktioniert, ist das sicher kein Problem, aber es schaut irgendwie, nein, es klar, es ist einfach jetzt nur eine Designfrage. Gell? Der Auspuff schaut nicht professionell aus, in meinen Augen. Er muss halt eine dunklere Farbe haben. <lacht> Er schaut einfach nicht so professionell aus. Das gleiche habe ich damals über die Dings auch gesagt, über die äh, Technical Robust von Husqvarna. Da war es so, dass die, Mot äh, die, die Schnittschutzhosen einfach durch eine graue Farbe nicht äh, professionell ausschaut. Die haben das angelehnt an die braunen ähm, Ölgehäuse. Aber da die Auspuff schauen aus, als wie bei den Ranger-Sägen, ähm, die einfach Semi-Profi. So, also die, die professionalen Sorgen, also die oder als Semi-Profis so ausschauen los. Sauce. Welcome, Johan. Thank you, Jan. It's good to finally be here. It's great to have you. Thank you. So, introduce us to our new chainsaws. Sure. Uh, we have the 592 XP here and. Mm -hmm. Wir haben mal das Gefühl, kurz einbremsen. Das ist der Kettenrotdeckel von der 572, alt bekannt, doppelt die Ausch 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 uh, Einschlagkrallen. Anscheinend gibt es ein neues Schwert, das haben wir alles noch erfahren. Die Zylinder sind wieder schräg montiert, nicht gerade, wie bei der Reit 72. Da ist anscheinend ein QR-Code für irgendwas zum Auslesen. Der Deckel oben ist angelehnt an die Neige 55 äh, Mark II. Äh, Kettenbremsen, Ding schaut aus, Griffhälse wird es wahrscheinlich natürlich auch wieder geben, denke ich. Und ja, schauen wir weiter. The 585 here. Now obviously we have two chainsaws. Uh, yep. Why is that? Well, as you mentioned before, we... Uh, really care for our customers and we listen to our customers and we know that uh, all of them they have different needs mm -hmm. so here you have one for the customers that are searching for the, the extra premium performance okay and uh, here's one for them who are looking for a, a re reliable workhorse got it so let's so is the semi profi profi sege this is the uh, <laughs> Für die Nutzer mit der höchsten Anspruch, mit den höchsten Ansprüchen, und das ist halt die Semi-Profis, die die Sog nicht jeden Tag benutzen, aber trotzdem eine große Sog brauchen, so wie auf einem Sägeplatz, auf einem Sägewerk, wo er jeden Tag die Sog nicht braucht, gleich ein paar Schnitt machen, das ist der eine, der jeden Tag im Wald ist, so ungefähr ist aber einmal die, die genaue Aussage. Let's start with the 592 XP. <coughs> Take us through that premium performance that you were just mentioning. Yeah. Uh, the 592 XP uh, is uh, a, a powerhouse designed to do the, the, the very toughest work on the largest trees. Uh, as all Husqvarna chainsaws, it boasts optimized uh, weight and balance, which was, of course is uh, super important of a chainsaw uh, of this class. Mm. Optimizing weight and balance, but let's get right down to the brass tacks of it. How much mm -hmm. does it weigh actually? Uh, without cutting the equipment, uh, the 592 weights in at uh, 7.4 kilos. Okay. And the uh, 585 at 100 grams more. All right. This class. 
Hmm. Optimizing weight and balance, but let's get right down to the brass tacks of it. How much mm -hmm. does it weigh, actually? Uh, without the cutting e the equipment, uh, the 592 weighs in at uh, 7.4 kilos. Also 7,4 kilo, exklusive Schnittausrüstung. Ich werde nachher das noch nebenher mit der 572 vergleichen, dann sage ich euch das, wie viel die wiegt. Okay. And uh, 585 at 100 grams more. All right. Well, <coughs> they're obviously powerhouses, mm -hmm. um, but uh, another part of our DNA at Husqvarna is maneuverability. So how easy are they to handle? Yeah, sure. Uh, maneuverability is a uh, true Husqvarna heritage. Mm. And uh, in, in this subject, I could uh, talk a lot. We have uh, put down a lot of effort into this because, as I said before, the chains of this class and size it's even more important. Mm -hmm. And I think we are really succeeded here. But uh, just look at it. The narrow saw body, the front handle uh, really close to the center of gravity as possible, the centered rear handle and its shape. Things like this mm. makes this chainsaw really, really easy to handle. Okay. And... Um, I mean, the, the front handle is up to three centimeters closer to the best in competition. And this is a differentiator, a differentiator when it comes to maneuverability. Und das dadurch die, das Handling natürlich bei den Husqvarna Sägen wie bekannt eben sehr gut ist. Das ist wirklich bei Husqvarna ausgezeichnet. So Kim Stiel, meines Erachtens wird es halt nicht so, wie dass die Motorsägen so, so ähm, ähm, manövierfähig sind, müssen wir jetzt sagen, also so, so gut Handling haben. Uh, many of our testers, H-Teamers, they actually prefer uh, this powerful, maneuverable chainsaw uh, over other smaller chainsaws, even in climbing applications. Mm -hmm. So that's maneuverability, but of course the real magic happens when you combine maneuverability with the raw power that mm -hmm. we have here. Mm -hmm. So... Um, he has a lot of power, and he has the 85-ton autotune. I hope he sees that. He has a normal vergaser. So can you take us through that a little bit more? Yeah, yeah, uh, I can. And uh, this is performance, Gent. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have three big claims here. Okay. Uh, we have the most powerful chainsaw in its class. The most powerful 90cc that you can get. Mm -hmm. uh, but not only that, uh, we have the best in class power to weight ratio, meaning the highest power, but in relation to its weight, we have the best ratio. And thirdly, we have the best cutting capacity claim in its class. Mm -hmm. So like you said earlier, I'm sure that our customers can experience... Also 5,6 kW bei 7,4 kilo. Die, boah, die 5,72 hat 4,3 kW. Everything that you just said there, you can feel it when you run it. But can you actually quantifiably prove that, what you just said? Yes, uh, and otherwise I wouldn't be standing here claiming that. Uh, we have done meticulous testing of third-party testing agencies, comparing it with the competition, competitors uh, of the same displacement class. And I can say, Gent, without a doubt, that this one has the best cutting capacity. Well, the best cutting capacity you can get. All right. So the engine is obviously a big part of that, but there's got to be more to cutting capacity 
um, and uh, everything that you mentioned before than uh, just the engine. Yeah. How does it all? How does the system all come together? Mm. The 5892 uh, has a part uh, from the powerful X Torque engine that you also have here, of course. Um, an X Cut uh, C85 or C83 chain, and uh, that further enhances uh, cutting capacity. Uh, when you combine this with the XTUF lightweight bar, you get a powerful tool that is surprisingly easy to handle and maneuver. So we discussed a lot of... Jeg ser spritstriber dig en nunk den svært i motorsuk skulle forhandle nu. About performance and maneuverability, but we also design our saws for reliability as mm -hmm. well. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about that. Uh, yeah, uh, when it comes to reliability, there's a lot of things that I'm very proud over. What's up, Sokviki? Man has to make pity now, Pia Pringon. Pity. Yo, no, pity. No, 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 Ume. Uh, just drüben sind ein paar Bier in den Kühlschrank, ja. Der Kellermeister und zwei Sips dabei. Bitte. Just to mention a few uh, the magnetic fuel filters, uh, the improved air filtration, the uh, heavy duty air filters, uh, I mean the captive bar nuts. Uh, the two-piece crankshaft. Also wieder ein Ding verlust, die habe ich äh, muttern auf dem Kittenrotdeckel, an großen Luftfüter. Ich hoffe, er macht da die Motor so genau auf, dann sieht man sie genau. Gravity casted cylinders. Uh, there are basically no compromises when it comes to dur uh, reliability, durability on these saws. Wow. And uh, the 592 is equipped with the uh, third generation of altitude which uh, further optimizes the engine performance mm. and uh, calibrates depending on external factors such as uh, temperature. Okay. You mentioned the magnetic fuel filter. Yeah. So that's a new thing, mm -hmm. interesting thing. Mm -hmm. So what's, what's, why a magnetic fuel filter? Well, um, uh, a magnetic fuel filter uh, catches anything that is magnetic and shouldn't be in the fuel tank. Like metal also, er hat einen, einen magnetischen uh, Kraftstofffilter und alles, was metallisch ist, wird dadurch auch noch mitgefiltert. Also, es kann nichts metallisches mit in im, uh, im Verbrennungsraum. Shavings, iron Anything shavings, like things that. like it that. Cap captures that before it reaches the carburetor. Okay. And captured bar nuts, I think, even though that's yeah. not new on this saw, yeah. still worth pointing out that it's nice to not lose your bar nuts when you're out in the field. Yeah, right. exactly. Really good. Also, eben, es riecht jetzt einmal über die Verlust, die haben Mutter. Um, you mentioned Autotune, right? Mm -hmm. Now, Autotune, it actually enables a new technology that we're putting on these saws for the first time mm -hmm. that we should probably talk about, mm -hmm. also relating to reliability. Yeah. And that's our new Simple Start technology, right? Yeah, exactly. And uh, I mean, that's a, that's, a, that's a big thing because it's the first time we have what we in technical terms call uh, uh, run on choke. But uh, we also call it Simple Start. And it basically, um, you don't have to think about choke and no choke and what mm -hmm. temperature you have, if you soak the engine or not. You just pull the start level to start position. Mm -hmm. You pull and go. All right. Yeah. Super simple. That's a big thing. Also, anscheinend gibt's keinen Choker mehr. Der ist anscheinend, anscheinend macht er das automatisch, das Choker. Das ist noch der Nachbarn. Ja, schaut.
thing. I agree. That is a big thing. But mm -hmm. let's actually talk about another big thing, mm -hmm. and that is Bluetooth connectivity. Yeah, right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Please. Um, both. <laughs> chainsaws are uh, prepared for that. On the 585, you can always retrofit the Husqvarna fleet puck. And uh, on the 592, uh, it's, it's prepared for um, retrofitting the connectivity device. And the connectivity device basically connects all data that you have in the chainsaw mm -hmm. uh, to your um, fleet management system. So this would actually be... Um, built in yeah uh, to so it's prepared to actually take this inside the saw yeah, it's inside the saw right yeah. and that's actually quite an impressive uh, feature yeah. for I think professionals of, of any walk of life yeah being able to use uh, this type of service to track and keep up with uh, a fleet be you a, a fleet of chainsaws be you a logger yeah. Uh, contract logger, be you a tree care professional with um, a, a fleet of saws, being able to um, to do uh, to get the latest in diagnostics and things like that, right? Yeah, not least uh, the service manager to yeah. to to get an an overview, uh, a good sense of uh, control, and um, uh, especially when when you have multiple saws. Right, right. Yeah. Let's actually turn to the 585 now. Let's dive a little deeper into that chainsaw. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. Tell us about uh, what we should know. Well, um, the, the, the 585 is based on the same platform as the 592, mm -hmm. but it's equipped with more traditional technology, technology that you uh, are used to. Uh, that you have seen before. That you can always service uh, without the the having having to use a, a computer, for instance. But it's <coughs> it's a modern performance, but through a more traditional technology. So you have the easily adjusted carburetor that I mentioned, the heavy duty air filtration, in a robust, durable package. Mm -hmm. Obviously, there's more uh, things that I mentioned before, like. Uh, uh, very beneficial features uh, such as the captive bar nuts, uh, the flip-up fuel caps, uh, the 2K molding uh, fuel window, mm -hmm. uh, 2K molding felling sites. Uh, these are features that... Also, that's not only by the 565 both so have and that will greatly improve the overall handling and uh, and cutting okay so basically with the 592 xp if mm -hmm. you want the highest in performance and the highest in technology mm -hmm. that's definitely the saw for you mm -hmm. if uh for the 585 you might be the customer that's looking for the more classic, you know, uh, technologies that you're used to servicing, used to working on, um, but still high mm -hmm. performance, high reliability, and great maneuverability, right? Yeah. 
So for many of our customers, these saws are actually going to be replacing some classic legacy saws that mm -hmm. uh, are tried and true. Mm -hmm. um, for example, the 390 XP, the 395 XP, and in some cases, the 288 XP. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So tell us, what is a customer that comes from one of those classic legacy chainsaws to these new chainsaws? What are they going to experience? Well, obviously a lot. Uh, the metrics are in, in fine print, but overall, we've covered it before, mm. but the, the new saws represent significant improvements in maneuverability, performance, and reliability, both of them. Meaning, I mean, handling, more power, torque, acceleration, mm -hmm. higher cutting capacity, joy of use, but with lower fuel consumption. The new X-Torque engine is simply more efficient. More power, but with less fuel needed. Well, Johan, you've said a lot uh, today, and you've done a great job taking us through your two new chainsaws. But I want to challenge you to summarize it down to one sentence. What does it mean for you, for the folks watching here today? One sentence. What is, <laughs> what's it all about? Okay. Uh, that's really hard, but I'll try. Mm -hmm. um, modern versions of a Husqvarna Classic. Or can I try again? Yeah, I like that one though. <laughs> but uh, but okay, go ahead. Uh, no, it's really, it's really 60 years of chainsaw knowledge condensed into two new models. They're just more of everything. Well said. I won't pick which one I like the best because I like them both. So we, we take them both. All right. <laughs> Thanks. Good. <laughs> Johan, thank you so much. For so passionately taking us through your two saws uh, here today. I know that you'll be, uh, I'm, I'm sure you're proud of uh, what you and the team have, have brought forth. Yeah. And I'm proud as well. And with that, again, thank you for, for everything you've done for us here. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. Really fantastic uh, chainsaws, gent. Best in class. And as stated, the users are the ones we work for. And it's in the hands of these professionals we know if they really are up for the test. Husqvarna has 40 H-Team brand ambassadors around the world, not only testing and using our chainsaws, but also part of the product development. And today we are going to interview uh, one of the H team members, and it's Darren Dean from Canada. So very much welcome, Darren. Welcome. Yeah. Hello. So can you tell us a little bit about yourself and what you work with? Yeah, I'm Darren Dean, and I uh, live on Vancouver Island in British Columbia, and uh, I do lumberjack professional lumberjack shows and i'm also a professional forester so i get a unique opportunity to use chainsaws in a variety of different environments i can imagine what would you say are the main challenges in your work when working with really large trees one of our biggest challenges is just the terrain we work in we work on some steep ground a lot of the times and in some pretty variable weather so one of our biggest challenges is being able to maneuver through that environment wow well, Darren, you had the chance to work with both a 592 XP and a 585. Tell us, what was your first impressions with these saws? I actually, my first impression, both of them were actually really amazing saws. Uh, they were quite comfortable to work with, very smooth. Uh, really impressed with, with both saws. Great. Uh, 
ähm, und scheinend, ja, ist auch die Mutter deswegen begeistert, ja, war fast nichts anderes zu erwarten. We put a ton of effort into finding maximum cutting capacity. It's one of the hallmarks of, of the saws here, and specific for the 592, extra focus for cutting capacity there. Did you did you notice that performance uh, in, in cutting capacity when you were working with the saw? Yeah, absolutely. Um, it was one of the first things we noticed. We we were running it with uh, some, some very large bars and in some very large wood a lot of the time, and um, a great cutting capacity. It was actually quite difficult to, to slow the saw down in even the largest trees we were in. Both saws are equipped with who's gonna X-cut. How does that impact the overall efficiency? Uh, it was, I was quite impressed with the X-cut chain. We, I'd used it on the 572 previously and running it again on the larger saw, it performed really well. It was a great combination with that power head and that bar and chain combination. Okay. Also, ich wollte jetzt über die X-Cut-Ketten gesprochen und ja, anscheinend funktioniert sie nach wie vor noch immer gut. And the 592 has a completely new starting uh, technolog technology. In your, in your opinion, uh, is it easy to start? Yeah, it was actually one of the things I really liked about this saw. Uh, it didn't matter whether it was hot or cold, uh, it was just one simple procedure to start it every time. And quite often it was starting on the very first pull, so it was. I was very, really impressed with it. Okay, that's that's great to hear. It is also equipped with a number of features such, a, such as auto-tune 3.0 and heavy-duty fil filtration to safeguard continuously high engine performance. Can you feel this? Is it possible to feel it? Can you trust it to run in uninterrupted? Yeah, we, we use the saw in a variety of different environments and under different loads that we had it uh said in the forest running normal cutting and we had it on a chainsaw mill and you you could notice the saw making adjustments uh if it needed to it was very quick um, from running it at sea level bringing it up to a thousand meter elevation the, the next day and the auto tune adjusted perfectly and the saw always was was running great as i spreche darüber dass das auto tune um hervorragend funktioniert Eben vom Meeresspiegel, also von äh, Niveau 0 bis 1000 Meter, ähm, funktioniert die Sock mit Autotune tadellos. Aber das hat sie vorher natürlich auch. Also da weiß ich nicht, bin ich neu. Natürlich, Startverhaltenes hat er vorher schon angesprochen. Das bin ich auch schon neugierig, wie das funktionieren sollte. So, whose corner saws are all built with the user's workday in mind? Uh, so the power to wait is in extremely important. The 592 is best in class, or in its class actually. In what way does this affect you and your workday? Yeah, actually, I noticed that right away with the saw. I mean, when we pick the saw up, uh, it doesn't feel like a heavy saw. So it's great to have the ability to, to run that larger saw all day long. Um, it's giving less fatigue at the end of the day and just easy to maneuver. So less fatigue means uh, less risk of, of accidents. And it's just an all around great saw. Like you said, our first impression was the saw feels lighter than it, it is on paper. It's quite nice to use. Also spricht darüber, dass die Motorsock natürlich sehr leicht ist. Es ist mit um, 6,8 Kilo ist sie wirklich nicht schwer für eine Leistungsklasse. Um, ohne Schneidgarnitur natürlich und ohne um, um, Öle und ohne uh, Benzin. Und er sagt, dass sie sehr einfach dann uh, Handhaben war im ersten Zug. Leicht dann um, aufheben, also beim Aufheben hat man schon gemerkt, dass es kein schweres Sohn Also ja, ich bin neugierig nachher, wie es nachher wirklich ausschaut, wenn ihr mal eine zum Testen kriegt. Well, Darren, the 585 is built around the, the concept of um, traditional technology meets modern performance. So the 585 has a traditional needle carburetor in it, combined with uh, a lot of the advantages we've already talked about with cutting capacity and, and power and performance. But did you notice any any differences between uh, running the needle carburetor uh, versus the the auto tune? Was there any um, ch special challenges or issues um, with that different technology? Definitely didn't have any challenges with the different technology. Uh, the 585 performed uh, well in different environments as well. Uh, we only had to make some very very minor adjustments the first day when we started it up from the factory, but uh, it performed really well uh, throughout all the testing we did with it. It was great. And, you know, in a lot of people's mind, that traditional carb is, 
is a very reliable technology. So I think it's it's going to be a pretty trusted saw. Also die 5.5-Rohrstelle habe ich auch probiert und gesagt, dass der mechanische Vergaser, der Standardvergaser, der Mali, der alte Vergaser, wo ähm, quasi nachdem sie sich aus dem Werkzeug kommen, ein paar Tage später dann einstellen, ein bisschen was hin und her, das ist extra beim normalen Vergaser, ist das so. Und ähm, er spricht aber darüber, dass das einfach zuverlässig durch ist und nach wie vor noch immer funktioniert und noch immer Anklang findet. And the adjustments that you made, was that relative to altitude maybe or something like that? Yeah, I believe so. I mean, was, we had uh, literally the first time we pulled it out of the box and fired it up, we just made a very minor uh, adjustment, so it, and then it ran perfect for the rest of our testing. Great. So you would say then that uh, the 585 performs well in uh, no matter the conditions, be it uh, the altitude that you're at, the uh, tough, dirty environments of, uh, of West Coast logging. It, it held up and did the job. Yeah, it held up great, and, and we definitely did have it in a variety of different environments and some pretty harsh conditions, and it performed great. And maybe you um, kind of already answered this, but with the 585 specific to cutting capacity, they did also have the, the cutting capacity performance uh, to get the job done. Yeah, absolutely. We had it, uh, the saw running with the 28-inch bar on it, and... It, again, it was very similar to the 592 in cutting capacity, whereas it was difficult to slow the saw down. Uh, we put it, we tested it pretty hard in in large diameter logs in excess of a meter diameter, and yeah, great cutting capacity. It was, like I said, very difficult to slow the saw down. Well, it sounds like both the 592 XP and the 585 is uh, more than enough to get the job done. It's a, uh, you can rely on it. You can trust uh, either one of these saws for the the jobs that you do. Yes. Oh, absolutely. I would be very comfortable taking either saw out any day in, in our conditions here. Well, that's what we want to hear. Thank you so much, Darren, for uh, joining us today. Yeah, thank you, Darren. Thank you. It's been a pleasure chatting. Well, no matter where you are in the the world there is a logger or a tree care professional relying on a 90 cc class chainsaw today and husqvarna's new 592 xp and 585 are truly a new level of performance a best in class level of performance with more power than ever thank you for joining us yes thank you so much
Det var dog, at man kan aldrig ind i Shonama. Præcis. Okay, jeg er i kun ind i dag. <laughs> Hvis ikke, så er det sidste råd i bad med tons med seks timer. Hvis I mig informeret, hvis I ikke kvitter det også, hvis I ikke lukker mig ind, så er det her, så er det sikkert en overrætning, så er det bare et smidt af links. Og det er virkelig, der vil jeg sådan ikke super opruffe, men hvis jeg ikke tager mig ind i community. Okay. Fast nu har bis til næste mål i hovedet, det er sådan et format, det kan jeg ikke fornøje. Og jeg ønsker jer en skønt weekend og bis til forløsning. Fedt dig.